Welcome to Radio Short Scale Modeling. This is part 9 of AMT Star Trek Next Generation Enterprise D. Scale is 1 to 1 400. In this part, I'll be concentrating on the lower half of the saucer section. In part 8, I placed in the lights on the up, upper part of saucer section. So this, this is just finishing off all, all that work. And hopefully by the end of it, I'll be able to close up the saucer section. So let's jump into this and see how well I get on. To begin with, I'm working on the captain's yacht. This sits directly below the saucer section, um, just where the bridge is, directly below that. So it's a mirror image, really. Now, this part um, isn't molded particularly well, as in there's not much detail in it. Uh, for the captain's yacht. The, there's no areas I to show you in great detail where all the um, windows and everything like that are. So I had to look online to see where they were. And it's just a bit of guesswork really we are in place in, in these holes. But nevertheless they have to be drilled out. And um, because it is such a small part it is quite tricky. Uh, the thing can slip quite easily. And um, just like I say, I stabbed one or two little uh, fingers along the way doing this. It took quite a while to do. On the photos that I've seen, the um, the windows are quite large uh, on the yacht. Um, but I didn't want to open them up to that extent. Similar to the uh, quandary I had with the main saucer section with the windows. I didn't want to fatigue the plastic that much. I would end up melting it or... I, I, maybe my knife slipping and damaging the surrounding area so I thought just the little uh, holes for the windows would suffice um, and like the bridge uh, on the reverse side I'm just taking out a little trench uh, so the light can carry through to the end point it isn't ideal um, as I say these windows should be opened up a lot further than I, I'm actually going to be doing it but I'm just not confident enough to do it without damaging the part so I'd rather just have these little pinprints of light coming through and now that I've made the holes in the captain's yacht I've got to remove this um, area here uh, so the light can travel through and I'm just using my knife uh, once more to um, start the process uh, use it as a pilot hole, then drilling an area, then I'll gr gradually just open up the uh, part and uh, take off uh, any excess plastic. Now you can use your Dremel or cutting tool uh, for this of course, but I wasn't exactly sure how well this would sit. So I wanted to create, to create a little opening first, so I can just look inside it when the part's um, in place to see how much I should be cutting away. So as you can see, I've made uh, three little holes and I'm happy with the position of everything. So I'm just using my scuff tool here just to dig away the plastic. Um, this is quite tough plastic and I'm going to put quite a bit of force in here to do it. Now, I, of course, I can scrape the area away using my knife and gradually digging it down. Or, as I said, use the Dremel to do it. But um, the, the little sculpting tool uh, does do the job. It just takes a little bit longer than normal. There isn't any real finesse to this, as well as you'd ask. It's just a matter of removing the excess material away. But, um, like I've said before, um, I am doing it in a controlled way, so I'm not taking f too much plastic off. Because, obviously, um, if you take too much off, it's very difficult to put it back through filler and things like that. So it's better just to take a little bit off at a time. I forgot to point out, uh, this kit... Uh, comes with two parts for this area, one for the captain's yacht and one uh, just like a blank part. Now the instructions say if you're having the saucer section uh, displayed on its own with the battle bridge separate, use the other piece. But if you're having it put together, use the uh, captain's yacht. I don't know why that is, but um, that's what the instructions are saying. But I would have been including the captain's yacht no matter what anyway. So that's it in place now. Now it's time to remove the masking tape that I had placed on uh, at the beginning of the build. Uh, so um, as I'm removing it, you can see the bare plastic coming through. And what this is effectively doing is creating light 
bleed areas uh, around the saucer section where the windows are that I haven't drilled out. Um, and this will give the illusion of them being lit up. Now, some of them will um, need a, a little bit more work. Um, but first of all, I have to uh, scratch away the paint that's already on this, so all the priming paint on the separate windows. So the light blocking is taken away, and I'm only doing this on each uh, section of windows. Some I am going to be drilling out as well, some of the, the larger ones, uh, but the majority I'm just going to be scraping the paint away. The ones that I am removing, I'm going to use my heavy tool here, uh, just to start mark, marking the line that I want to cut through. But the, all the rest and just scraping away and using my drill bit to do this. Sometimes if you use your knife and you're too heavy it can dig into the plastic and you'll end up with um, the windows uh, a bit rotted so you, you'll have lines going down them and it's a bit unsightly and it's difficult to sand them down so you may as well remove the um, material if you're going to do that. Now the ideal way to do that I suppose is to mask them off before you um, do your light bleed on both sides um, but that can take a long long time so um, I've decided to do it this way it does work it's just a bit of a long-winded way to do it and now it's time to remove some of the material so um, first of all I'm creating the line and I'm just punching my way through with this um, sculpting tool being very very careful that I don't punch in too hard and uh, of course the um, blade then will slip onto an area that you don't want to remove. It's quite delicate work um, and this is one of the reasons why I haven't done it for all the windows. Some of them are too close together and it would end up just breaking the frame. Then I would have to um, fill that in and re rebuild it. So hence why I'm only doing a few of them. Now it turns out the plastic actually on this area is quite thick so this is taking more work than I anticipated to remove them. So I've got different cotton tools here and everything just trying to remove the material. Once it's through though I'm using my square file to uh, get rid of the uh, excess material and I'm just pressing that in and from the cuts I've already made this is going to give me a, a square hole uh, which is perfect for the windows. Again, it's a little bit tricky, but once it's in there, um, it's given me enough room on each side to actually have a window frame. So that one there that I'm just pointing out, out near the camera, it, it does work. So now that's all done, it's uh, time to join everything up. So um, I'll just reposition my camera here uh, so that you can see it all. My bench is a half a mess at the moment while I'm doing this. So f first thing I have to do is uh, put the wire through the opening like that. Well, that's the second thing I had to do. The first thing I did was put the cement on, of course, um, then put the wire through, then married up the saucer section. Now, I decided to start from the um, rear of the saucer section, lining up the impulse engines first of all, then just clamping it lightly um, in position before I go around and clamp the rest. Now this is uh, quite an important moment and it's um, well worth getting this part right because it can slip and once it slips then you're in a world of trouble. So make sure if you're doing this kit to line everything up as best you possibly can. Now the areas where the LEDs are, the 3 mil LEDs, that's the indicator, located lights. These are the ones that had to sit flush right at the end um, or there'd be no room to um, shut up the saucer section to seal it together. Now even though I've put them flush they still need quite a heavy clamp to make them join. Um, there's a lot of pressure involved in this so a couple of F clamps is needed to bring everything down and tight. If you haven't got any F clamps, G clamps work just as well also. So this is where I'll leave part 9. Um, this is going to have to be left for a couple of days to make sure everything is secure. There's a possibility that there may be some light bleeds, so happy through the curing process, when you know it's not going to move, when you release the clamp, just check, then re-position if need be. This is why it takes a couple of days for it to uh, fully cure.
So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the channel for my other builds? If you subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you'll be kept up to date with all my builds, including this one, of course. Hit that like button. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. And of course, you can share the video. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye-bye.